Welcome to another video and in this video we are going to look at uh, the topic of characteristics of DC motors. We had seen earlier another video on characteristics of DC generators and this one is now about DC motors. So the classification of DC motors is exactly same as that of classification of DC generators. So let, let me just begin by briefly reviewing that classification first classification of DC motors. By classification I, I mean what are different types of uh, DC motors. So of course one is separately excited and self excited. So as you know a DC machine and a DC motor consists of a field winding and an armature winding. If the field winding is having its own separate source and the field winding is excited by an independent source, then that machine we are calling it as a separately excited DC motor. Whereas the field winding is excited uh, by the armature itself, then we call it as a self excited. Under self excited, as you already have seen, we have shunt. We have series and we have compound uh, motor. So how, uh, what is this? In, in a shunt motor, the, C, the field winding and the armature winding are connected in parallel. So the meaning of shunt means parallel. In the series uh, DC motor, the field winding is connected in series with the armature winding. Again, exactly same as that of generators and in compound uh, motors we have uh, the part of the field is in parallel and a part of the field is in series so it is this is just a combination or compound of the shunt and series so it, it exhibits uh, both the characteristics so again as you know the compound is classified as long shunt and then short shunt So in a short shunt compound uh, DC motor, the shunt winding is first connected in parallel to the armature winding and that in turn is connected in series with the series winding. Whereas in the long shunt, this is S H U N T, the long shunt machine, first the series winding is directly connected in series with the armature winding and this combination is overall connected in parallel to the shunt winding. <laughs> Excuse me. So this is again two types of uh, compound generators. Again in long shunt and short shunt, since there are two windings of the field, I can connect these two windings such that their fluxes are adding to each other, that is cumulative connection or I can connect them in such a way that the series winding flux is actually subtracting or it is opposite to the flux of the shunt winding. So that is a differentially compound uh, generator. So I could have cumulative and I, I can have differential. Similarly here also cumulative and differential. So differential, short shed, compound, self excited DC motor. When I say that you should be able to visualize the circuit of it. Similarly, cumulative long shunt compound self excited DC motor again how it looks like and so on. So this is briefly about classification of DC motors. So what we now do is actually our topic if you remember our actual topic is characteristics of DC motors. So we'll, uh, we'll delve into how these different motors perform for different loading conditions and different situations. So for that I take only these three three types. See basically the shunt machine and the separately excited machine are one and the same for the purpose of our discussion in this thing. So these two come under one category. Then series is different and then the compound is different. Of course under compound there are subtypes. We will we'll also discuss that. 
So I simply simplify it into mainly three broad categories. So one is shunt and separately excited. So this is basically one category. Next, uh, I'll talk about series DC motors. And finally, we talk about the compound DC motors. Of course, under compound, we'll talk about cumulative and differential, both long and short shunt. Now, in each of these case, I'd like to uh, see three characteristics. So uh, to remember it easily, I'll just make a small symbol like this. Let's call this torque, speed, and armature current, IA. So there are three nodes and three sides of this triangle. So I can get three different characteristics. So the first one, let's say torque versus IA. Torque versus IA. So this is the one characteristic. The second characteristics I can, I can think about is speed versus IA. As the armature current varies, how the speed varies and so on. And the third final characteristic we can think about is uh, the other side of this, that is torque versus speed. Or let me let me check. It is actually speed versus torque. So how does it matter? Uh, what I am following the notation is that uh, this is on x-axis and this is on y-axis. So if I now make it into a complete box, I have something like this. For each of the types of the machine, I have uh, three different characteristics. So what is the torque versus IA? So this, this one will be on x-axis. So for example, the IA will be on x-axis and then the torque will be on y-axis and so on. So this basically this nine combinations we would like to discuss quickly uh, over the next course of this video. Before we delve into all these three types of ma machines, let's briefly review uh, some of the well-known equations. So in a DC motor, so let me draw a shunt motor just for the sake of reference. Now this is a motor, so therefore, so the input is electrical. So this is V supply or V main and then this is the IL and this current is armature current IA and this current is the field current IF. So this is how uh, and the output is mechanical. So there is a shaft coming out of this motor and there is a mechanical load connected to this which is, uh, which is uh, running. In this there is something called EB. So EB is the back EMF. So the back EMF is ac across this armature of the motor. Now what is this EB? So we, we have this EMF generation equation. This is exactly the same equation we have. This is phi Zn into P divided by A into 60. Now the derivation of this EMF equation is done at the initial stages of this course. This is a very basic equation which says that the back EMF induced in the motor, first of all, is proportional to the speed that means if i rotate the motor faster or if i the more uh, faster the rotation is there the more higher is the back emf similarly number of conductors number of poles and inversely proportional number of parallel paths and, and so on the derivation of this has been already done in this video so uh, i request you to please check the one of the earlier videos for the emf equation of a generator this is the EMF equation. 
Now, from this EMF equation, I'll slightly manipulate a little bit. So, what the manipulation that I'm doing is, uh, I want to write it in terms of omega. So, uh, I have I have flux as same as it is. In the space of n, I'll write 2 pi n by 60. And then to compensate for this 2 pi, I'll divide by 2 pi again. And this a is already in the denominator. And then z and p are in the numerator. So I have not done anything different. This is exactly the same thing. Phi is same. Z is same in the numerator, Z and P in the numerator, Z and P are there. 60 and A in the denominator, they are also there. 2 pi and 2 pi, I am just basically multiplying by 2 pi and dividing by 2 pi. Now what is this? 2 pi N, N is the speed in revolutions per minute. So that divided by 60 will be speed in revolutions per second. If you multiply by 2 pi, you get the uh, radians per second. That is the angular velocity of the rotor. So, I get Eb is equal to phi into omega. Now, this part, Z is the fixed number of conductors, P is the fixed number of poles, A is fixed again, number of parallel paths, depending on lap winding or wave winding. And phi, finally, 2 pi is also fixed. So, this entire quantity is a constant. So, let's call it as Ka. So, this is the first concept that you are getting here. Back EMF is some constant multiplied by the flux and the speed in radians per second. Now, I want to relate this with the torque. So, what we get for the torque? So, again, you go back uh, to the machine. Now, back emf is eb ia is the current flowing into the back emf so the product of eb and ia will be nothing but the torque developed by the machine so i mean the power developed by the machine and the power developed by the machine is nothing but torque into omega so this this is the mechanical uh, equivalence so torque into omega is nothing but eb into ia now i can simply substitute the value of eb into this so torque into omega is nothing but k flux omega into ia so just i have substituted the value of eb here into this one so now i can strike off the omegas on both sides so now i am again getting torque is nothing but k into ia i'm sorry flux is also there in other words, torque is proportional to the flux and armature current. So these are the two important uh, conclusions that we get from uh, doing this so far. All right. So now this is in general. Now let's come to actual characteristics. So here I am interested in knowing the characteristics of torque versus IA. So let's first talk about shunt, shunt motor, torque versus IA. So what is torque versus IA? It's exactly what you see at the above here. See the flux is constant for a shunt motor. Therefore, torque and IA are proportional to each other. So therefore, this is what is, is the characteristic. So on x-axis is the IA and y axis is the torque. So if you want to generate higher torque, you, ha you have to send in higher armature current to the machine. Now I made it, see this is the condition that the flux is constant. However, you all know about armature reaction. Whenever there is an armature current increasing, the increased armature current results in cross magnetization effect and demagnetization effect. Now the cross magnetization effect is addressed by shifting of the brushes from magnetically neutral, from geometrically neutral axis to magnetically neutral axis. Whereas the demagnetizing effect will actually weaken the flux. 
so the flux will become slightly less so if if you assume that flux is constant then this is the relation linear relation between torque and ia the more ia is there the more torque you can generate uh, by the motor but then uh, if you consider the demagnetization effect then slightly the torque will be lesser than the what is expected so something like that. this is considering demagnetization so this is the first uh, characteristic torque versus ia so what do you understand from this is if if you want higher torque you send in higher armature current next i am interested in speed versus ia this is the second characteristic i am interested in so in order to uh, work out the speed versus ia we will have to just go back to once again the emf equation that is back emf is nothing but phi z n into p by a so here i am interested in n so if i say of course there is 60 also if i say n equal to then 60 a divided by z p this is one constant now e b by flux so i believe i have done exactly the same thing just writing n on the left side and writing everything else on the right side from this uh, what we get is n is nothing but some constant can i use the same i think it's a different constant let's call it kn uh, divided by i think the constant also i'll take it to the denominator so it will be something like flux into kn and in the numerator i have the back em now uh, the back em if is nothing but terminal voltage minus iara this is the drop in the armature so this is where we are introducing the uh, factor i uh, relation between n and ia now you see if ia is zero for a for a shunt motor the flux is constant kn is also constant supply voltage is constant ra is constant therefore if ia is zero n will be nothing but v by flux into kn some amount and then slowly ia increases because of this minus sign the n will keep on decreasing but then see this total voltage and this is the voltage drop in the armature typically voltage drop in the armature is like two to five percent of the supply voltage so therefore this minus sign will will just slightly reduce the speed so from from this particular expression now i can write the relation between ia and speed so it will be something like this so this is speed versus ia of the uh, machine as the armature current increases speed slightly drops so this is maybe the rated speed or no load speed slightly there is a drop in the speed as the ia increases so this is exactly mathematically what this equation already says it. now finally we have last expression that is n versus torque so because torque and ia are proportional to each other so this relation more or less is uh, similar to that of the uh, torque versus is more or less similar to the above one speed versus ia this is torque and speed and so on so that means as the load torque increases the speed falls for a dc shunt motor however it should not fall but this fall is not very significant it is about five percent five to ten percent maybe that's the speed regulation of a dc motor thus in these three plots we had discussed uh, all these things so let me maybe i'll just try to cramp in everything here 
So on x-axis is IA, on y-axis is the speed. On x-axis is torque and y-axis is the speed. So this is like a line like this. Considering demagnetization, it is like this. Here it is slightly falling and here also it is slightly falling. By the way, what is the effect of demagnetization? So here you notice as the IA increases, the flux also becomes demagnetized slightly. That will increase the speed because you notice that the speed is inversely proportional to the flux. If the flux is less, speed will be more. So I uh, will draw one more line here. So this is demagnetization. So considering If I consider the demagnetization effect, the speed will be slightly higher than what is expected if not considering it. And here also, considering the demagnetization effect, I will get something like this. Anyway, so this whole thing is now the discussion about the shunt and separately excited DC generator. Now let's uh, work out the other two examples, that is series and compound generator. Now coming to series gen uh, generator, so let me draw the series uh, uh, generator diagram. I think I have to open a new file. So, series generator, uh, I am sorry, DC series motor. Now the series motor is, is nothing but there is a series winding and there is a armature winding and then this is connected to the main supply and then there is a load connector, mechanical load. Now this is a motor. So now this is RSE, series winding. Now the thing is, uh, the same earlier whatever we have discussed, torque is proportional to flux and IA still applies for even for this motor. But here what is happening is, flux is in turn proportional to IA because whatever IA is flowing in the armature, the same IA also flows in the field winding. Therefore, if the IA current is more, then flux is also more. So therefore, resultantly, the torque will be proportional to the square of IA because flux is in turn proportional to IA. So therefore, if I go, go through that proportionality constant, so torque will be proportional to the square of IA. This is true as, as far as the poles are not saturated. Once the poles are saturated, this, this condition does not apply. After saturation, flux is no longer proportional to IA. Therefore, flux will become constant, some high saturated value, and the torque will be only proportional to IA square. So thus, from, from this, I can conclude that if I have IA and torque, initial part will be like a square. So that is, uh, torque is nothing but IA square, but then later part will be almost like a straight line. So for reference, this is the straight line that, that we are having. So compared to the shunt motor, uh, the, the, the torque generated by the series motor will be higher uh, because this is a proportional square of the armature current. However, one thing you should notice, when IA is very, uh, the, the series motor should not be operated on uh, no load torque because when the flux is less the speed will be dangerously high in fact we can see that uh, once again so here we have back emf eb and then ia is there here so from this this is supply voltage v so what we get 
earlier we had derived an expression so let me refer to that so this one so n is proportional to or n is nothing but v minus i a r a by flux into k now if i take this now and discuss in terms of uh, i a r a and then plus r a c because series resistance is also there in a series motor divided by flux into k i've just copied the same expression here here you notice that speed is proportional to inversely to the flux therefore initially if there is no load then i a is very low and flux is also very low therefore the speed will be dangerously high so a, a dc series motor should never be started on light load or no load condition because if you start that way then the current will be very less and as a result the flux will be very less as a result it will attain dangerously high speeds so it is not safe to operate a series motor under uh, less load conditions however as as your uh, ia increases uh, then the flux also increases and therefore the the whole thing gets normalized and then it becomes like a normal thing so so that is why the the relation is something like this is ia versus speed so so far we have discussed two characteristics torque versus ia and speed versus ia so finally torque versus speed is what is the final characteristic so for the dc series motor so this is series motor this also series and finally this also series motor so what is the torque versus ia so if you see i a and n have this relation whereas torque and i a are kind of this relation initially it's a square relation later on it's like a straight line so from this we can actually interpret and uh, it's not exactly a kind of a hyperbola kind of thing but then you get a curve something like this so i'm not going into the in depth mathematics of it i'm just presenting you with the logical uh, explanation of how the characteristics will look like see what do we mean by transformer current being very less that means there there is a load is very less on the transformer not transformer sorry dc motor i am just getting mixed up with transformer topic so in that case when ia is very low torque also will be low therefore the this kind of feature we are again repeating here so this is about uh, the characteristics of series winding so this three that i have drawn here so let me go back and summarize it into our main chart uh, see in the series torque versus ia so initially it is square later on it becomes straight line whereas the the speed versus ia is like this when the ia is very less so this is ia and this is speed this is ia and this is and finally uh, this is also similar torque versus speed now what is a compound generator compound generator nothing but a part of the field is series and a part of the field is in the shunt mode so the, it has both shunt winding and a series winding therefore the characteristics of this will be in between the characteristics of the separately excited or shunt plus the and the series so between these two the characteristic will change so only with that uh, uh, basic idea i'll just uh, again there are in depth mathematical derivations for this which i am not going into so any textbook will will show that i'll just show you the characteristic how it looks like so ia versus torque now here you see what is the see one is a straight line and one also starts from zero and then kind of square and then again straight line so it will be something like this so it starts from the origin point even a compound motor also if it is no load the torque will be zero and then it gradually increases like this 
Now this rate of increase may not be as high as the square of IA uh, to T as in the series case. The rate of increase here is linear, the rate of increase here is square, therefore the rate of increase here will be in the middle of these two. Now uh, we also know that a compound has two types, one is the cumulative, other is a uh, differential. In the differential case what happens, the flux gets weakened and as a result of weak flux, torque also will become weak. So therefore we get something like this kind of line uh, in the case of a differential kind of a uh, system. So this is differential, this is cumulative. So C is cumulative. and D is differential. Next coming to speed versus IA. So again when you look at this characteristic, here it is slightly drooping straight line, here it is heavily uh, coming down. So what we can expect is something like this. It's a, it's something a combination of these two. So this is cumulative. Whereas uh, sometimes the flux will be reducing and the speed can go even higher also. This is this is the differential. So this is IA versus the speed. And finally the last characteristic that is speed versus IA. Sorry, speed versus torque. So on X axis is torque, Y axis is speed. So again it has some characteristics like this, cumulative and differential. I'm sorry, I think differential will be higher, cumulative will be lower. So this way we are able to get the different characteristics of the shunt generator, series generator and compound generator. I hope you understood this logic behind uh, constructing this uh, kind of a drawing where you are summarizing the characteristics of the DC machine. These are fundamental characteristics of any DC machine and you should have an idea about it. Let's uh, try in the remaining time, let's solve one or two example problems and see if we can understand further these concepts. Okay, so let's look at one uh, example problem based on the earlier discussion about characteristics of DC motors and uh, the data is given to you, please try to solve this problem yourself and try to understand how it works. Meanwhile, uh, I will also work out the solution. Alright, so the solution goes like this. Let's begin by drawing the circuit diagram. So a 250 volt shunt motor runs at 1100 rpm. So shunt motor, the moment I see that, so I draw the shunt motor. So this is 250 volt supply voltage then uh, let's have an armature then I have this motor and then the field winding and this is a motor and the running at the speed of 1100 rpm taking current of 25 amperes. So here the current is 25 amperes. The resistance of the armature is 0 0.25, so 0 0.25 ohms. And the resistance of the shunt winding is 250 ohms. So right away here I can see the, the total resistance is, uh, total voltage is 250 and total resistance is 250. So therefore this current will be 1 ampere. So the field current will be uh, 250 divided by 250 that will be 1 ampere and therefore the line current is 25 ampere so armature current will be line current minus field current because this is a motor the 25 amperes will split here 1 ampere will go there and the another remaining 24 amperes will enter into the uh, armature of the machine. Now at this stage let's calculate what is the back EMF EB. So the back EMF uh, will be, I can simply apply the uh, voltage law 
So V equal to the total voltage that I am applying will be equal to IARA voltage drop in the armature plus the brush drop. Normally we ignore this brush drop but if it is given in the question we have to consider plus the back EMF whatever is the back EMF. So 250 volts is equal to 24 amperes into 0.25 plus brush drop is 2 volts because 1 volt per brush is given. So there are 2 brushes so it will be 2 volts and then EB. So from this I can determine what is EB. So 24 into 0.25 is actually 6, 1 fourth of 24 is 6, 6 plus 2 is 8, 250 minus 8 is 242 volts. So I got the EB. Now let's go back, calculate the speed when loaded to take a current of 50 amperes. Now due to some reason the current is now increased to 50 amperes. Alright, so when the current, so this is IL1 is 25 amperes. Now the IL2 that is the line current after increasing the load now it is 50 amperes. So when 50 amperes is flowing first of all why 50 amperes see what is happening is if I increase the load on the shaft it will slow down the motor when the motor is slowed down back EMF will reduce because back EMF is proportional to the speed when the back EMF is reduced the, uh, according to this expression if EB is reduced and V is fixed and the brush drop RA is fixed so therefore IA has to increase more current will be flowing into the machine and that more current is what here it is saying 50 amperes all right so now what is the armature current in this case so 50 amperes means the armature current now will become 49 amperes so I might be confusing the circuit diagram it's it's better to draw a separate diagram for the second case and then do that. So maybe I will quickly do that instead of confusing uh, in the same diagram. So in the second case what is happening I have 250 volts here and the current is 50 amperes and 1 ampere is going into the field winding and 49 amperes is going into the armature winding. I can right away tell that the speed is going to reduce because here for 1000 rpm back EMF what we calculated was 242. Alright, so let's now this is 0.25. So brush voltage drop is uh, 1 volt here. So now let's calculate the second EB2. So this one we designate as EB1. So let's calculate EB2. The, the same logic. So this is 250 minus 49 into 0.25 minus 2 is nothing but your EB2. The same expression I have written. So let's calculate it. So 49 into 0.25 is this one. So to this I will add 2. For this I will give a minus sign and then to that I will add 250. So I am getting 235.75 as the voltage. 235.75 as my EB2. So now earlier, so the question is what is the speed now? So earlier we had uh, uh, derived that the back EMF in a machine is proportional to the product of flux and the speed. So therefore I can write EB1 by EB2 is equal to flux 1 by flux 2 multiplied by n1 by n2. So the more flux is there more back EMF will be generated or the more speed is there the more back EMF will be generated. That is what given the constants of the machine this expression holds. So now I have uh, most of the things available here. So let me substitute now EB1 I know so 242 volts. So divided by EB2 just calculated 235.5 uh, 75. This will be equal to flux 1 is unknown but then what I know is flux is weakened by 5%. So you see the question here consider demagnetization of main field due to armature reaction about 5%. So the flux is weakened by 5% so it will become 0.95 multiplied by the original flux. 
and what is n1 n1 is 1100 rpm that is given the question and n2 is what we need to find out so here uh, this uh, this term cancels out and from this i can get n2 so let me directly do that in the calculator so i'll have to multiply okay 242 with 0.95 and then divide by 1100 okay so i think it will be nice to write it down first 242 by I'm sorry n2 will go into the numerator so here it will be 235.75 multiplied by 1100 divided by 0.95 multiplied by 242 exactly so this is the uh, this is the correct one so multiplied by 1100 divided by 0.95 again divided by 242 so i am getting 11 1128 1128 rpm now this is something strange actually you notice that at 1100 uh, when the load is increased the speed also increased uh, to 1128 rpm this is again a very strange behavior when load is increasing why the speed is increasing if you if you remember uh, the characteristics that speed versus ia so is something like this so when the ia is uh, 25 amperes speed was about 1100 now the ia is becoming sorry this is 24 amperes now ia is between 49 amperes so therefore speed must be below uh, 1100 but then the solution we are getting is 1128 so the reason is that uh, demagnetization effect due to armature reaction so if you consider that demagnetization effect then it will be uh, somewhere higher like this so this this value now is correspond to 1128 rpm so therefore uh, what we are getting is justified in fact if i don't consider this 0.95 so if i if I just take 1128 and then just take 0.95 to cancel that out so I am getting 1071 that is 1071 which is not considering the effect of demagnetization which means the speed will be lesser anyway let's now calculate uh, let's now do this next part of the question that is determine the load torque for both cases so how much is the torque here now what you know is torque into omega is nothing but back emf into armature current so torque 1 into omega 1 is back emf 1 into armature current 1 similarly torque 2 into omega 2 is back emf 2 into armature current 2 so basically we repeat the same thing here so first calculate the load torque 1 so what is back emf 1 242 volts multiplied by armature current is 24 amperes now this whole thing will be divided by the omega omega is what 2 pi into speed in rpm 1100 revolutions per minute and whole divided by 60 so which i can keep it in the numerator similarly now let's calculate for t2 the torque in the second case is so basically load has increased so i am expecting torque to be increased so let's see what happens so uh, 235.75 is the back emf multiplied by ia2 is this armature current that is 49 divided by uh, omega 2 that is angular velocity so 2 pi into 1128 <coughs> divided by 60 will go to the numerator it is like this so let's calculate this Two forty two into twenty four into sixty divided by open brackets two into pi into 
1100 brackets close so i'm getting 50.42 newton meters so this is the torque that is uh, developed in the first case now coming to the second case what do we have so 235.75 multiplied by 49 multiplied by 60 divided by open brackets 2 into pi into 1128 so i'm getting 97.79 or 97.8 so you notice that the torque has almost doubled so with the doubling of the torque the armature current also doubled you see from 24 to 49 so that is again one more relation we can we can estimate so i think uh, with this we had uh, completed all the all the requirements of this question let's see more please review our answers with this so here is another uh, interesting question that uh, you can consider so please try to read the question and try to answer it and you can compare your answer with uh, my answer you may pause the video now and then try to answer this so a shunt generator delivers 36 kilowatt at 240 volts and 500 rpm so let me again uh, to make uh, the idea simple let me draw the circuit shunt generator so if it is a generator then uh, you know that the output is electrical so this is generator and it will have a electrical load here so this is a load and the voltage of the load is 240 volts so at this point uh, the voltage is 240 volts let me draw the voltage uh, somewhere here and the load is 36 kilowatts so from this i can find out the load current the load current will be nothing but 36 kilowatt divided by uh, 240 volts so let's quickly work it out so 36000 divided by 240 150 amperes so the direction will be pointing towards right side 150 amperes meanwhile uh, the field re the resistances are given 0 0.03 is the armature resistance and 60 ohm is the field resistance so now the armature and field resistance are listed. Calculate the speed of. So if this is 60 and this is 240, I can again calculate the current. So the field current. This was this, and then the field current is nothing but 240 divided by 60. So that is uh, 4 amperes. So 4 amperes will be flowing towards this direction. So therefore the generator must have generated 154 amperes. So the armature current in the generator will be load current plus field current. So that will be 154, 150 plus 4, 154 amperes. So now the question is what is the generated EMF, EG? While this was running at the speed of 500 rpm given in the question. So 1 volt per brush I have to allow the drop. So what is EG? So uh, whatever EG is there, if I take out all the drops, finally I will get the output voltage. So 240 volts is nothing but the generated EMF EG minus IARA that is 154 multiplied by 0 0.03 minus the drop in the brushes that is 2 volts because 1 volt per brush is the brush drop so from all these things i can determine 
uh, what is eg this implies that eg equal to so first i'll take uh, 154 multiplied by 0 0.03 so this is 4.62 then plus 2 will be 6.62 so that will go to the other side and then add to 240 246.62 is the voltage this is the uh, emf generated in the case of generator now calculate the speed of the machine running as a shunt motor all of a sudden now we have to draw a shunt motor so let's let's uh, come back and then draw the shunt motor so shunt motor will require an electrical input so therefore it has an electrical input here and it has a field winding basically it's the same same machine actually so this is 240 volts because this is also given in the question that is taking 40 kilowatt input at 240 volts so the input power is 40 kilowatt so p input is 40 kilowatt so therefore how much current it is taking so how much current it is taking will be uh, i line that is nothing but 40000 divided by 240 so that will be One sixty six point six seven amperes. Meanwhile, this is one sixty six point six seven amperes. The current in the shunt will still remain four amperes because two forty volts divided by sixty ohms will give four amperes current here. Therefore, the balance of current. So now the armature armature current is line current minus field current. So that is one sixty six point six seven minus four that is 162.67 amperes so this is 162.67 amperes and this is 0 0.03 and then one volt drops here one volt drops here so the question now is when it is operating as a motor what is the back emf so back emf we can again by simple ohms law we can calculate so 240 volts is nothing but whatever is the voltage drop here 162.67 into 0 0.03 plus whatever is the brush contact drop 2 volts plus the back emf ev so from all these things uh, what is ev so let's work it out so from this i'll subtract 4 i'll get this 162.67 multiply it with 0 0.03 and then plus 2 is this whole number and then this one I assign a minus sign and to it I will add 240 233.12 233.12 volts now the question is I have calculated the back EMF now what is the speed so we know that whether it is back EMF or whether it is uh, generated EMF so eg or eb is proportional to the product of flux and the speed so therefore uh, i'll write eg by eb eg in the case of generator eb in the case of motor is nothing but flux in the case of generator and flux in the case of motor and in both cases the flux is same actually if you look at the circuit diagram 4 amperes will generate the same amount of flux whether it is operating as a generator or whether it is operating as a motor so therefore the flux is same only difference will be in the speeds speed as a generator versus speed as a motor so we have all the numbers here let's plug in all of these numbers and we'll be able to calculate so 246.62 divided by back emf here is 233.12 is equal to the flux is same speed of gen generator was 500 rpm what is the speed of the motor so this implies that the speed of the motor is nothing but 500 into 233.12 so this multiplied by 500 divided by 246.62 so 
so that will give me 472.6 472.6 revolutions per minute so this will be the speed at which the motor will be running for the given conditions so again i hope you have uh, understood this question i hope you found this interesting so this is about the uh, one more example so these are so far we have worked on shunt motors uh, let's quickly look at the series motors also one or two problems and then we'll we'll close this topic here all right so here is another problem and this is this time this is now a series motor so slightly uh, complicated thing but then a series motor at the end of the day if you draw the circuit you're just solving the circuit so let's uh, you can study this question and you can try to answer this meanwhile i will also uh, attempt this question and then I'll, I'll show you how to how to work on it okay so let's let's begin by uh, reading the question 230 volt series motor has an armature resistance of 0.2 ohms and series fuel resistance of 0.1 ohm so right away if it's a motor and that to us if it's a motor then uh, let me give uh, electrical input that is 230 volts then i have the series field then i have the armature resistance then i have the armature itself that's it this is the motor and this is 0.1 ohms and this is 0.2 ohms and this is the motor and the output of the motor is mechanical and the the basically the speed is 1200 rpm and the torque is 70 newton meters determine the current required to develop a torque of 70 newton meters at 1200 rpm is the question so this is now how do you solve this so this is now uh, what kind of ideas you I'm, I'm just myself trying to think about how to work it out so here there are two unknowns actually eb is the back emf and then ia is the uh, current here so if i just look at the electrical parameters from this voltage ia into this drop uh, brush drop is not given in the question so therefore i will get a relation between back emf armature current so one one equation i'll get it meanwhile the product of eb into ia is nothing but the torque into omega so i'll get one more equation but then the second equation is actually the product of these two so anyway so with that basic idea let's let's begin if i if i find any if i do any mistake i'll once again correct myself but let's go with my initial idea how to work it out see uh, let's look at just solving only as per the kirchhoff's voltage law here so 230 volts will be nothing but ia into this two so 0.1 plus 0.2 this drop plus the back emf so therefore 230 equal to 0.3 ia plus eb okay so this is one equation so meanwhile uh, the other equation that i'll be getting is torque into omega so torque into omega is nothing but back emf into armature current of course here this is i am assuming this is the developed torque not the shaft torque the shaft torque will be if if it is a developed torque is 70 newton meters shaft torque will be less than that uh, considering losses and all but then for the time being that since that data is not given the question i am not considering that as a shaft torque so now i have everything here so 70 newton meters multiplied by omega so 1200 into this is 2 pi into this by 60 so this will convert everything into radians per second so that is on the left hand side on the right hand side i have eb multiplied by ia both are unknown actually and then i have one equation for both of them so anyway let's simplify this so i will go to my calculator so let me write here 
70 multiplied by 1200 multiplied by 2 multiplied by pi whole thing is now divided by 60. So I am getting 8796. So 8796 equal to EBIA. I am just rounding off. Now how do you find, the question was to find IA. So I have these two equations. So this is equation 1 and this is equation 2. From this I will have to find, uh, this is not two linear equations. So this, that's what I am thinking. Oh. Okay, so I think I think we can solve it as a quadratic equation. So what is EB here? So from the equation 1, I will write EB is equal to 230 minus 0.3 into IA. So this I this will substitute in the second equation. So 8796 equal to 230 minus 0.3 into IA multiplied by IA. So this is now coming out to be a 0.3 IA square all right minus 230 will it be minus yeah minus 230 IA plus 8796 equal to 0. I got a beautiful quadratic equation. So now I can find IA. So minus B that is 230 plus or minus square root of b square that is 230 square minus 4 into a into c whole divided by 2a that is 2 into 0.3 so let's do this So first I will do this part. So 4 multiplied by 0 0.3 multiplied by 8796. So this whole thing is this. Now I will give a minus sign to this. Then I will add 230 square is equal to. So I got this whole thing. Then square root of it. 205. So 205.77, all right. So let me write that 230 plus or minus 205.77 divided by 0.6. So I think if I take a plus sign, the armature current will be too high to consider. So let's consider only the minus sign. So 230 minus 205.77 divided by 0 0.6 so 40.4 is the current I am getting here so 40 point actually it is 38 amperes so this is the current so other ways uh, the other uh, value will be too high and doesn't look like uh, that will be suitable all right, so we have solved the first part. Determine the current required develop torque of 70 Nm at 1200 RPM. All right, now let's come to the second part of the question. Determine the percentage reduction in the flux when the machine runs at 2000 RPM at half the current. Okay, so the question is how much the flux is reducing? So the percentage reduction in the flux is nothing but when uh, when the speed is increasing, it will be uh, it will it will cause. In fact, for a uh, for a series motor, when the when the load reduces because half the current it is saying when the load reduces, speed actually increases. So that is what is the we had studied that characteristic. So. So let me remind you that so IA versus N. Now for for the armature current of uh, forty point three eight amperes, the speed is uh, how much? Two hundred and 
1200 rpm so this speed is 1200 rpm for the armature current of 40.38 amperes now the question is the 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 speed is now 200 2000 rpm higher speed and the current is actually it's it's given half so 20.38 apparently it goes to that point if that is the case then what is the reduction in the flux is what is the question that is being asked so let's let's try to work it out so see i have only drawn this figure just to you know review myself the uh, basics and you know try to see where the answer is going so meanwhile the current is reduced so the to half that is given the question so armature current now becomes ia2 which is 40.38 by 2 that is 20.19 amperes so let me draw the circuit also so to save the space i'll draw it horizontally there's a series winding then there is a armature resistance then there is a motor and then i am applying 240 volts i remember oh 230 volts so this is point 0.1 this is point 0.2 Now the current is 20.19 amperes. So this is the IA current. So immediately I can now find the back EMF. What is my EB2? So without even thinking, I'll just write right away calculate back EMF EB2. So hoping that maybe that information will be useful later. So what is EB2? So I can I can write the expression here first. Uh, 230 is equal to 20.19 into 0.3 that is the addition of these two plus eb2 so therefore eb2 will be 230 minus this product okay you can do that so 20.19 multiplied by 0 0.3 and then give it a minus sign and then to that i will add 230 so 229.3 223.94 so eb2 and i think we did not calculate eb1 earlier so let's calculate eb1 from solution of ia so eb equal to 230 minus 0.3 into 40.38 so 0.3 multiplied by 40.38 is this one I give it a minus sign and to that I'll add 230 217.88 so this is EB1 217.88 volts i think i am now getting a sense of uh, the solution see for a for a machine what is the back emf back emf is proportional to the product of flux and the speed this is what we are already seen many times before also be it a series motor shunt motor whatever motor therefore eb1 by eb2 will be flux 1 by flux 2 multiplied by speed 1 by speed 2 and we have gone through all the paints calculating all these EVs so now let's uh, plug them in so 217.88 you will be in the numerator divided by EV2 223.94 223.94 will be equal to flag phi 1 by phi 2 and n1 by n2 earlier the speed used to be 1200 rpm now the speed is 2000 rpm so therefore uh, from this i will find out what is phi 1 by phi 2 so this is nothing but this 
now I am interested in finding phi 1 by phi 2. So therefore this uh, multiplied by 2000 then divided by 223.94 again divided by 1200. So I am getting 1.6216. So this is 1.6216. Uh, this is the fraction. So what, what exactly was asked in the question? Let me refer once again. Determine the percentage reduction in the flux. Okay. Percentage reduction in the flux. Okay. So, so therefore, uh, what is phi 2? Phi 2 is phi 1 divided by 1.6216, which is nothing but I'll just do 1 by x of this, 0.6, so this is 6167, 0 0.6167, phi 1. So, it is 61, so phi 2 is 61.67% of phi 1. So, therefore, how much it has reduced? Phi 2 has reduced by so from 100 I will subtract 61.67 so so minus 1 I will do it here so 38.33 so flux has reduced by 38.33 percent from the original value so that is what is asked in the question and I hope uh, this is what is the final solution. So therefore, uh, I hope you understood something from uh, working out this uh, problem. So, so basically the idea is to be very strong with all the characteristics, uh, understand the fundamentals, understand the basics, draw the circuit diagram whenever a question is asked in the question and from that circuit diagram you can derive the solution. Thank you.